Hello, welcome back to Meditating the Word. My name is Cherie. I'm your host and fellow traveler on this journey through the Bible in a year. Whether you've been reading the Bible for years or this is your first time to read it from Genesis to Revelation, I'm glad to have you with us. Now let's jump into today's passage. We're six months in. I'm proud of you for hanging in there. This is day 184. Today, we're reading 2 Kings 5 through 8. I'm reading from the World English Bible. Let's get started. The Second Book of Kings, chapter 5 through 8. Now Naaman, captain of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. The Syrians had gone out in bands and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little girl, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, I wish that my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, then he would heal him of his leprosy. Someone went in and told his lord, saying, The girl who is from the land of Israel said this. The king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. He departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of clothing. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come to you, behold, I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel had read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I a god to kill and to make alive, that this man sins to me to heal a man of his leprosy? But please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel against me. It was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me now, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall come to you again, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leper. Aren't Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. His servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, If the prophet had asked you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? How much rather then, when he says to you, wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned to the man of God he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, See now, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive none. He urged him to take it, but he refused. Naaman said, If not, then please let two mules' load of earth be given to your servant, for your servant will from now on offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice to other gods but to the Lord. In this thing may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the house of Ramon to worship there, and he leans on my hand and I bow myself in the house of Ramon. When I bow myself in the house of Ramon, May the Lord pardon your servant in this thing. He said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, 
My master has spared this name and this Syrian in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. When Naaman saw one running after him, he came down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? He said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of clothing. Naaman said, Be pleased to take two talents. He urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of clothing and laid them on two of his servants, and they carried them before him. When he came to the hill, he took them from their hand and stored them in the house. Then he let the men go, and they departed. But when he went in and stood before his master, Elisha said to him, Where did you come from, Gehazi? He said, Your servant went nowhere. He said to him, Didn't my heart go with you? when the man turned from his chariot to meet you. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive groves and vineyards and sheep and cattle and male servants and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman will cling to you and to your offspring forever. He went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. The sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we live and meet with you is too small for us. Please, let us go to the Jordan, and each man take a beam from there, and let's make a place there where we may live. He answered, Go. One said, Please be pleased to go with your servants. He answered, I will go. So he went with them. When they came to the Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was cutting down a tree, the axe head fell into the water. Then he cried out and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. The man of God asked, Where did it fall? He showed him the place. He cut down a stick, threw it in there, and made the iron float. He said, Take it. So he put out his hand and took it. Now the king of Syria was at war against Israel. And he took counsel with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. The man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. The king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and he saved himself there, not once or twice. The king of Syria's heart was very troubled about this. He called his servants and said to them, Won't you show me which of us is for the king of Israel? One of his servants said, No, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. He said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. He was told, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses, chariots, and a great army there. They came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was around the city. His servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He answered, Don't be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. When they came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Please strike this people with blindness. He struck them with blindness according to Elisha's word. Elisha said to them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. He led them to Samaria. When they had come into Samaria, Elisha said, O Lord, open these men's eyes that they may see. 
the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the middle of Samaria. The king of Israel said to Elisha when he saw them, My father, shall I strike them? Shall I strike them? He answered, You shall not strike them. Would you strike those whom you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, then go to their master. He prepared a great feast for them. After they ate and drank, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria stopped raiding the land of Israel. After this, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. There was a great famine in Samaria. Behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for eighty pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cob of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. He said, If the Lord doesn't help you, where could I get help from you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? Then the king asked her, What is your problem? She answered, This woman said to me, Give your son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him, and I said to her on the next day, Give up your son that we may eat him, and she has hidden her son. When the king heard the words of the woman, he tore his clothes. Now he was passing by on the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth underneath on his body. Then he said, God do so to me and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, stays on him today. But Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. Then the king sent a man from before him. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Do you see how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? Behold, when the messenger comes, shut the door, and hold the door shut against him. Isn't the sound of his master's feet behind him? While he was still talking with him, behold, the messenger came down to him. Then he said, Behold, this evil is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Elisha said, Hear the Lord's word. The Lord says, Tomorrow, about this time, a saya of fine flour will be sold for a shekel, and two sayas of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then the captain, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord made windows in heaven, could this thing be? He said, Behold, you will see it with your eyes, but will not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. They said to one another, Why do we sit here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we will die there. If we sit still here, we also die. Now therefore come, and let surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we will live. If they kill us, we will only die. They rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. When they had come to the outermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, no man was there. For the Lord had made the army of the Syrians to hear the sound of chariots and the sound of horses, even the noise of a great army. And they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled in the twilight, and left their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. When these lepers came to the outermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank, then carried away silver, gold, and clothing, and went and hid it. Then they came back and entered into another tent, and carried things from there also and went and hid them. Then they said to one another, We aren't doing right. This is a day of good news, and we keep silent. If we wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now therefore come, 
Let's go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the city gatekeepers and told them, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, not even a man's voice, but the horses tied and the donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out and told it to the king's household within. The king arose in the night and said to his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. One of his servants answered, Please let some people take five of the horses that remain which are left in the city, behold, they are like all the multitude of Israel who are left in it. Behold, they are like all the multitude of Israel who are consumed. Let's send and see. Therefore they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them out to the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. They went after them to the Jordan, and behold, all the path was full of garments and equipment which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. The messengers returned and told the king. The people went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians. So a sea of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the Lord's word. The king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to be in charge of the gate, and the people trampled over him in the gate, and he died, as the man of God had said who spoke when the king came down to him. It happened as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two sayas of barley for a shekel, and a sayah of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And that captain answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord made windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, you will see it with your eyes but will not eat of it. It happened like that to him, for the people trampled over him in the gate, and he died. Now Elisha had spoken to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay for a while wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine. It will also come on the land for seven years. The woman arose and did according to the man of God's word, She went with her household and lived in the land of the Philistines for seven years. At the end of seven years, the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. Then she went out to beg the king for her house and for her land. Now the king was talking with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Please tell me all the great things that Elisha has done. As he was telling the king how he had restored to life him who was dead, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life begged the king for her house and for her land. Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. When the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed to her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field, since the day that she left the land, even until now. Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. He was told, The man of God has come here. The king said to Hazael, Take a present in your hand, and go meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Will I recover from this sickness? So Hazael went to meet him and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels' burden, and came and stood before him and said, Your son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to you, saying, Will I recover from this sickness? Elisha said to him, Go tell him, you will surely recover. However, the Lord has shown me that he will surely die. He settled his gaze steadfastly on him until he was ashamed. Then the man of God wept. Hazael said, Why do you weep, my lord? He answered, Because I know the evil that you will do to the children of Israel. You will set their strongholds on fire, and you will kill their young men with the sword, and will dash their little ones in pieces, 
and rip up their pregnant women. Hazael said, But what is your servant, who is but a dog, that he should do this great thing? Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you will be king over Syria. Then he departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? He answered, He told me that you would surely recover. On the next day, he took a thick cloth, dipped it in water, and spread it on the king's face so that he died. Then Hazael reigned in his place. In the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being king of Judah then, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. He was thirty-two years old when he began to reign. He reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did Ahab's house, for he married Ahab's daughter. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight. However, the Lord would not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake, as he promised to give him a lamp for his children always. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. Then Joram crossed over to Zaire and all his chariots with him, and he rose up by night and struck the Edomites who surrounded him with the captains of the chariots, and the people fled to their tents. So Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah to this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. The rest of the acts of Joram and all that he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Joram slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in David's city, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his place. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. He walked in the way of Ahab's house, and did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, as did Ahab's house, for he was the son-in-law of Ahab's house. He went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth-Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. King Joram returned to be healed in Jezreel from the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah. When he fought against Hazael, king of Syria, Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. Father God, thank you for your word, and thank you for showing us your heart. You are faithful to your word, no matter how bad things got. How far astray the children of Israel and Judah went. In your abundant mercy, you kept a remnant. And through that bloodline, our Savior was born. And Father, no matter how much we mess up and go astray, you are still merciful. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your forgiveness. Amen. Well, there we have it, another chapter in our journey through the Bible. It's not always easy to understand, but remember, it's not a race, and each word we read is a seed planted in our hearts. Thank you for being part of this journey. Join us tomorrow and every day as we continue our journey through the pages of the Bible. This is Cherie signing off for the day. Remember, you are in my prayers. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.